In lesson 9.5, we're going to be talking about inscribed angles and inscribed quadrilaterals within circles. And there's some very important properties that we will need to discuss right off the top that will help us uh, navigate through this lesson. And then we'll be ready to do some practice uh, to just further enhance our understanding of these very important concepts. So let's get right to it. In a previous lesson, we defined an inscribed angle as an angle with its vertex on the circle with two sides that are chords. All right, so we got a picture here to the left. Uh, in inscribed angle is this angle ABC. Okay, an intercepted arc is the arc that lies between the endpoints. of an inscribed angle. So we're talking about these endpoints A and C. And so this is a review of a previous lesson. We've been working with arcs. And so that would be an, called an intercepted arc. The measure of, this is very important, the measure of the inscribed angle is equal to one half the measure of its intercepted arc. Okay. So we can make a statement over here that the measure of angle ABC is one half times the measurement of arc AC. All right, so we could just say one half of the measurement of arc AC. So just keep in mind as we go through this lesson that the angle, the inscribed angle is half. It's always half of its intercepted arc. All right. Now we get to another important property involving an inscribed angle that we use the word intercepts a diameter. So just think of it this way. One of the chords of the angle is actually the diameter. All right. So we have an inscribed angle here, but notice that BC, chord BC, is actually also, it doubles as the diameter of the circle. When this happens, it creates a right triangle. So if an inscribed angle intercepts a diameter, then it is a right angle. And the right angle is not made with the diameter. It's going to be made with this other, this other angle here that's opposite uh, the angle that's made with the diameter or directly across from on that bottom leg. So again, we can make a general statement. The measurement of angle BAC is 90 degrees. It is a right angle. And then the third important property that's going to be very useful in the next set of problems for these notes will be the property or the principle involving overlapping arcs. All right, so here's what we mean by that. If two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, okay, so I'll just use the example here. Here is angle ABD. You see how it intersects the, intercepts the arc AD, okay? Well, there's another angle that intercepts the same arc, AD, and it's right here. Okay, so both of these angles intercept arc AD. When this happens, the angles are congruent. All right, so we can make the statement based on this picture that the measurement of angle ABD is equal to the measurement of angle ACD. Or you could have said DCA, either way. But those two angles that intercept the same arc are always the same measurement, or in other words, they're congruent. OK, so now that we've established those, we'll get to reinforce those properties by doing some practice problems. So let's take a look at number one. Number one, we're given the measurement of this arc WY. Well, just remember that the inscribed angle, which is here, angle X, 
is always half of the measurement of its intercepted arc. So since wy, arc wy is 62, angle wxy is going to be 31. It's just 62 divided by 2. All right, here we have arc. We want to find the arc DGF. All right, so this large arc right here. Well, we're given the angle measurement, the angle, the inscribed angle that intercepts that arc is 113. And just remember, we just talked about the, the angle is one half of the intercepted arc. So if the angle is 113, the arc is going to be 113 times 2, which is 226 degrees. All right, here is a, an example of what we talked about earlier. When the diameter is actually one of the sides of our inscribed angle. All right, and what that does is it always creates, it makes a right triangle. So we have a right angle here, not the angle that's made with the diameter. It's going to be the other angle across from that. So we can say that PQR is 90 degrees. All right, a few more. Uh, let's find the measurement of arc BC. All right, so we know that uh, we're given this inscribed angle here, uh, angle ABC is 47 degrees. And again, just keep in mind that the measurement of the inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. So 47 times 2 should be the measurement of AC. So AC should be 94. And this represents a semicircle because our diameter is ADB or AB. Then um, we know 180 minus 94 is going to be that arc measurement. So 180 minus 94 is 86, and that's going to be the measurement of BC. All right, here we're supposed to find the measurement of angle JKL. Okay. So what is the measurement of that angle? Well, it's going to be half of whatever this arc is. Well, since we're told uh, these two arcs, we can take 360, subtract them off. And when we do that, we get 242. All right. So the arc JML is 242 degrees, and so this angle has to be half of that measurement. So that's going to be 121 degrees. Okay, here we have uh, the property that we talked about earlier, where we have um, inscribed angles that intersect the same arc. Okay, and we're supposed to find RST, the measurement of RST, which is right there. Well, that intercepts the arc RT, and so does this one. So remember, two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are congruent. So if we find either one of these, then we know that they're going to be the same number. All right, so uh, let's take a look at um, what we can do here. If we do 360 minus the three arcs that are shown, go to your calculator and you do 360 minus 64 minus 139 minus 75, you get 82 degrees. So this inscribed angle RST the angle is half of the arc measurement, so that's going to be 41. And since the two angles intercept the same arc, then they are congruent, so RUT has to be 
also 41 degrees. All right, uh, let's take a look at some problems where we're using the same properties, but now we're going to solve for x. So number seven, we are given this angle measurement and the intercepted arc. The angle is half of the arc, just keep that in mind. So I'm going to write an equation that shows the angle, 8x minus 9, is equal to one half of the arc. Just remember that phrase, the angle is half of the measurement of the arc. So 158 divided by 2 is 79. And now we solve for x. So 79 plus 9 divided by 8. And our value for x is 11. All right, let's take a look at number 8. Uh, here we have another example we're solving for x. We have this angle measured at 67 degrees. And we have this arc that we're told is 4x plus 58. Well, the angle is half of the arc size. All right. So you could do this. Uh, just write the equation. The angle is equal to half of the arc. So if you took the arc and divided by 2, you would have 2x plus 27. Sorry. It's uh, 20. Yeah, 27. 29. Sorry about that. All right. And uh, we subtract uh, 29 from both sides. And we get 38 is equal to 2x. And dividing by 2, x is 19. All right, let's talk about uh, number nine. Let's take a look. Applying these principles that we've been talking about. All right, so uh, we're trying to find angle x. And uh, we know based on the fact that one, we have this inscribed angle and one of the sides of the angle just happens to be the diameter. And so that means this not the angle where the diameter hits the circle, but the one across from that on the same leg is a right angle. So we can make the equation 13x minus 1 is equal to 90. Add 1 to both sides and then divide by 13 and you got your solution for x. Okay. Um, Let's see what we've got here. We're solving for x. Um, we don't have the situation where, like we did previously, uh, this is not a diameter because it's not going through the center. But we can find, um, we know that this angle, this inscribed angle, its intercepted arc is 78. So that means this angle has to be one half of that number, which is going to be 39. So I'll say angle XYW is 39 degrees. Writing that in there. Well, now we can use the 180 degree principle. All the angles have to add up to 180. So 180 minus 114 minus 39 is 27. So that's going to be the measurement of this angle. So we can let 7x plus 6 equal 27. Subtract 6 from both sides and then divide by 3 and we've got our solution. All right, um, here we have another inscribed angle and here's the intercepted arc. And let's find out the measurement of that arc. So we can do 360 minus 92 minus 162. And that's 106. 
All right, and so the angle is one half of the arc. So one half of 106 is 53. 7x is 63, so x is 9. All right, um, let's see what we got here. Um, we're trying to find x, and um, let's see what we can determine. So we're given this angle r, so that means the intercepted arc um, the, the angle is half of the arc me measurement, so that means 67 times 2 will be arc QS, and that's going to be 134 degrees. Okay. So if you do uh, 360 minus 120 minus 134, you get 106. And we'll let this arc RS equal 106 degrees, so we can solve for x. So subtract 21 from both sides. And divide by 5, and you got x is 17. Okay, uh, the next problem, we're given two angle measurements. We're told that FGH is 6x plus 21. And I'm sorry, we're given an angle and an arc, FJH. JH is 17x minus 28. So remember, the, arc, the angle is one half of the arc size. So we can let FGH equal one half of the arc. And so instead of distributing, I think it'd be easier just to go ahead and multiply by two on both sides. And that would give us 12x plus 42 equals, it just caused these to become one, 17x minus 28. Right. So we're going to subtract 12x from both sides and add 28 to both sides. So we get 70 is equal to 5x. And so 14 is equal to x. But we have to find the measurement of arc FJH. So let's plug in 17 times 14 minus 28 and we get 210 degrees. Let's take a look at number 14. We're told that angle STU is given as 5x minus 16 and arc SU is 12x minus 50. So let's find the measurement of the angle. Okay, so again, the angle is one half of the arc. So it's a similar problem to what we just did. Uh, multiply by two on both sides. Subtract 10x, add 50. Divide by 2. We got the value for x is 9, and now we just plug in. We've got to find STU, so 5 times 9 minus 16. E 29 degrees, 45 minus 16. We've got a couple more, and then we'll talk about inscribed quadrilaterals, some important properties there. And I think you'll be ready to go on this assignment. So here we have um, two arcs that intercept the same, two angles that intercept the same arc. 
So A, B, D, and A, C, D both intercept arc A, D. So that means the two angles that intercept that arc are congruent. So we're going to set A, B, D equal to A, C, D. And we'll solve for x. So 7x is 35, x is 5. And now to solve or to find out the measurement of AD, uh, let's take a look at uh, if we find out the measurement of ABD or ACD, it really doesn't matter. Uh, let's get the measurement of ABD. So we plug 5 in for x, 30 plus 26 is 56. Well, the arc, the angle is one half of the arc size. So 56 times 2 is going to be the arc size, which is 112. And that's the measurement of AD. All right, got one more of these. Um, let's see, We're, we know KJL and KLJ, and we also observe that one of the sides of the angle is actually the diameter. So remember, when that happens, this is going to form a right angle, which makes a right triangle. So we're supposed to find the measurement of arc KL. Okay, well if KLJ, and if we know KLJ given and KJL, and we know this other angle is a 90 degree angle, we can make all of these equal to 180, and that'll help us find X. So 3X plus 2 plus 7X minus 32. We know that they have to together equal 90 degrees. Or you could have obviously said uh, plus 90 equals 180, but then when you subtract 90 from both sides, you're our, where we are now. So combine like terms. And x is 120. So x is 12. And now we can find KL if we take, find the measurement of KJL, right? KJL would be 3 times 12, 36 plus 2 is 38. Well, the arc has to be double that amount. So the measurement of arc KL is 76. Okay, and then we just have a few. Um, a property involving inscribed quadrilaterals. Okay, so um, real simple property. If a quadrilateral is inscribed, okay, you can see the picture here. Quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. Its opposite angles are supplementary. All right, so in circle P to the right, we could say that angle D and angle B added together equals 180 degrees. And then we can also say measurement of angle A and the measurement of angle C also 180. All right, so let's take what we've already learned in this lesson and include this idea of uh, inscribed quadrilateral. All right, so we're supposed to find the measurement of angle J. Well, uh, J and L are considered to be opposite each other. So if you did 180 minus 92, you're going to get the measurement 
of angle J. So 180 minus 92 is 88 degrees. And then if you want the measurement of angle K, you do 180 minus 45, and that's 135 degrees. Right. So let's see what else we got. Um, I know the measurement of angle S has to be 180 minus 93. These two are supplementary. So 180 minus 93 is 87. Right. I also know, based on what we just learned, that angle R, this um, we could say R or QRS, intercepts this arc. So here's the arc that it intercepts. So if we did 126 plus 90, that's 216. So this angle has to be half of that measurement. So 216 divided by 2 is 108. And then you can apply the fact that R and P are supplementary. So if you do 180 minus 108, you get P, which is 72 degrees. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, we can get the measurement of angle D. If you remember, we just talked about angle D should be half of the measurement of that arc. So if you add those two together, 61 and 39, of course that's 100, so angle D has to be 50. And if angle D is 50, then the angle across from it, these are supplementary, so 180 minus 50 is 130, and that's going to be B. Right. Um, we notice that um, if we add all of these up, 147 plus 61 plus 30, let's see, angle C intercepts this arc. Also notice that angle A, let's do a little different color here, angle A intercepts this arc. So if you do 147 plus 61 and divide that by 2, because remember the angle measurement is half for an inscribed angle, it's half of the arc measurement. So 147 plus 61 divided by 2 is 104. And now A and C are supplementary, so 180 minus 104 is 76. Okay, let's take a look at number 4. These two angles have to be supplementary, so we can set 9x minus 5 plus 68 equals 180. Uh, combine like terms. Subtract 63. And divide by 9, and we got our value for x is 13. All right, number five, we're also solving for x. So these two angles, V and T, are supplementary. So added together, they should equal 180. Combine like terms. Subtract 195 from both sides. and divide by negative 5, 
and we got our value for x is 3. All right, uh, let's see what we got here with uh, number 6. Um, let's see, we can make use of finding angle. Uh, let's see, angle, which would be the best way to go. Looks like angle O. That's not a good choice, so let's look at that again. Uh, I've got these two, so it looks like that is uh, angle N. All right, so angle N is an inscribed angle. That intersects this arc, and we just add those two together, 135 plus 91. One thirty five plus ninety one is two twenty six, and if we divide that by two, the angle has to be half the arc, and that's one thirteen. So that means N is one thirteen, and these two angles are supplementary. Right. And so you combine like terms. Right, 90 and divide by 15 and we got our value for X. All right, let's take a look at this one. Uh, angle H. Intercepts this arc. And that arc is looks like 146. So I'll just do it this way, just GI is 146, so that means angle H is half of that, which is 73. So these are supplementary, H and J. So 12X minus 25 plus 73 equals 180. All right, combine like terms. Subtract 48. And divide by 12, and our value for x is 11. OK, we're just about done with our notes. Let's see what we got here. Angle W is 5x plus 1. Angle y is 13x minus 37. And those are opposite each other for this quadrilateral, so they are supplementary. So 18x minus 36 is 180. Add 36 to both sides, divide by 18 on both sides, and this time uh, we get a value for x, but now we have to find out what y is. And so you just plug 12 in for y, 13 times 12 minus 37, and that should be 119. Yes, so angle Y is 119 degrees. Okay, so that takes care of this lesson. And uh, I hope this helps as you are ready now to uh, tackle the um, assignment, the practice problems. But if you have any questions at all, please let me know, and I'll see you next time.